You know, one of my favorite stories to tell is my famous kiss story. When I was a teenager in the 70s, of course, I was a uh, big Kiss fan and I uh, had all their albums, Dressed to Kill, Destroyer, uh, Rock and Roll Over, um, Love Gun was even out, and actually all of the solo albums were out by the time you know, I was 16 years old. So I found out that Kiss was actually coming to town. I was living in Fayetteville, North Carolina at the time, and Kiss was coming to Greensboro. That's as close as they were going to get, which was about, I don't know, an hour and a half away, maybe an hour. So uh, my mom let me take her Oldsmobile Regency 98, 98 Regency car with two of my friends, Dell and Phil, and uh, let us take her car, which by the way, that, I mean, this was a, not a, you know, this was the pimp daddy car. This is this, at, in those days, the Regency 98 was like a top Lexus of today. So anyway, we take off for Greensboro, myself and Dell and Phil, and we get there, we're hanging outside the uh, Greensboro Coliseum, which is actually still there. And we're hanging out backstage. There was a small group of people, you know, 10, 12 people hanging out. And there was like a backstage door. You could see this ramp going down to a uh, backstage door. And uh, they had guards watching the backstage door, and uh, not letting anyone in. And they were, you know, they were bringing equipment back and forth, and you could see the the black boxes that had the K-I-S-S letters that were the big giant KISS letters that were at the back of the stage. And um, I remember there were uh, eight rider trucks. These were uh, 18 wheelers, brand spanking new, bright white with very clear rider you know, logo on them. And, and just eight, eight, 18 wheelers that were taking all the equipment. They were parked out in the parking lot and I remember um, we were standing outside and, and we watched a guy just kind of look like maybe a roadie kind of guy uh, walk out to the uh, um, trailer, one of the 18-wheelers, jumped on the back and the next thing you see is him just, there was a brown box that had Gibson written on the side. It was obviously a guitar from Gibson, a brand new in the box, in the crate box uh, container threw it off the back of the uh, truck, like just dropped it. And I'm like, oh my God, you know? So, and just drug it. He just like had it by the back of his hand, you know, just like a hand, just drug it into the backstage. Well, as it turns out, this was the throwaway guitar. At the end of the concert, Kiss always broke one of the guitars up and, and handed it out to the audience. By the way, so I noticed that by seeing that, I mean, Paul Stanley like played that throwaway guitar for maybe three chords or maybe he didn't play it at all at the end of a song and then throw it away. He didn't break up his most expensive great guitars. Anyway, so we're standing out backstage and Dale and Phil were bored. They didn't want to, not backstage, but back uh, in the back of the parking lot. Dale and uh, Phil didn't want to hang out so they went to the room or just did their thing and I was still, I was fascinated by seeing this whole backstage uh, situation. So, um, I'm standing there, and next thing you know, this girl walks up, and she's got like the, what would be described as goth these days, like, you know, black Elvira, you know, the black flowing, draping thing, which, you know, goth was really not in back then in the 70s. This was extremely out of place, really. Uh, I can't remember if she had, I don't think she had makeup on, but she was just wearing the black flowing uh, stuff, right? And I don't know, we just started chit chatting and stuff. And she claimed that she knew Gene Simmons and all this other stuff. And so I thought, what the heck? Let me let me show her. And what I had what I showed her was I had made um, as a hobby these little guitars, like little, you know, they're about five inches. And I made one that was a a Les Paul, and uh, like like the one that uh, Ace Fraley plays. So I uh, I showed her the guitar, and she goes, "Oh, that's so cute! I'll, I'll tell Gene about it." I'm like, "Great, fine, whatever, you know." So um, I'm hanging out more, and uh, next thing I know, I'm hanging out, and I look down the ramp 
of where the going to the backstage. So, like I said, we were outside and there was just like a truck ramp and a door down at the bottom of the truck ramp, a, also a garage door, but it was shut, but a little side door. And the side door opens and that girl with the flowing black thing was like going like this. And, and I'm like, me? She goes, yeah. So I start walking down and the security guy's like, where are you going? And I'm like, you know, she's calling me. And they look down and they, they checked it all out and sure enough, so I, I walk in the door and right inside the door, like there was like, a, I know when you walk in the door, there was like a locker or something there and you just, just walk around the corner and sitting there, there was this guy sitting there, like sitting on the table. And she goes, this is Ace. And I'm like, really? So um, there's Ace Fraley just sitting there. Now, now you gotta, another thing you gotta know is like in the 70s, the big thing was that Kiss didn't let anyone see them without their makeup. That was like, you know, all the magazines were trying to capture them without their makeup, but they, you know, that was like a big mystique thing. So here's Ace Fraley, so just to see Kiss without their makeup was a big deal, right? Because no one really knew what they looked like. So here's Ace Fraley sitting there, I guess, she said, right? And I remember, I remember he had like a lot of like, you know, pock marks, you know, like really bad skin. And he sort of reminded me of like an American Indian, I guess you would say, you know? And, and, and now you see pictures of him and you say, yeah, I guess that, you know, that kind of looks that way, right? But, you know, he wasn't wasted or anything like that. And I, so, you know, I was, at this point, I'm like shaking and I'm nervous and stuff. And so, you know, we just kind of chit-chatted and, and uh, you know, I had my little Hawkeye Instamatic camera and, and he kind of fooled around like he was going to take a picture of me, which was sort of, uh, you know, a joke because, you know, the big thing was that no one was allowed to take pictures of them. So, uh, so the girl says, yeah, show him the guitar. So I, I pulled out the little guitar that I made and he's like, oh, that's really cool. And he takes it and he like, like he plays, acts like he's playing it, right? And he signed the back of it. There it is right there. Ace Fraley. He signed the back of this. I still have it. This is the guitar that I took backstage. So, you know, it was really cool. Like he played it and stuff like that, right? So, um, anyway, so hung out a few minutes and, you know, it was like, that was about it. So, um, you know, I think Ace, oh, and he was saying, um, you know, where's my, he was going to show me his boots. All right. This was the, the year that the, all the Kiss figures, like Ace was light blue, Paul was purple, Gene was red, and, and uh, Peter was green. Like when they came out, when the show started, they, you know, that's when they started establishing their colors, right? This was from the solo album. And I was wearing the, by the way, I was wearing the, uh, oops, I was wearing the uh, Ace t-shirt, the solo from the solo album, a yellow t-shirt that had the Ace Fraley's solo album cover art on it. And he goes, you know, ah, so he signed it to Roger, rock and roll, Ace Fraley, up here, my shirt. Um, and so he said, oh, it's faded. I said, yeah, I wear it a lot, right? So I'm hanging out back, so Ace, I don't know, we broke up, whatever, and, and then, um, so I'm hanging out, I would heard that Gene was backstage or, or somewhere else with uh, his uh, stage assistant or whatever it was, right? So I'm hanging out, you know, 10, 15 minutes, and then, and then out comes Gene Simmons and, and just walked out, and there was a little group of maybe, you know, eight people, and what happened was these uh, three or four fans had made some, uh, statues, little figurines, uh, st uh, painted, like, uh, what do you call it, um, the plaster of Paris stuff, you know, and um, ceramic, whatever, and we're standing in a little circle, and I kind of like, just kind of made myself part of the circle, right, and, um, and Gene was saying, you know, we have the most, he was talking to the group, we have the most talented fans, and uh, I'm standing right next to Gene, and, and I thought, you know, if I, if I don't get a chance to meet do more with Gene Simmons, I'm at least going to touch him. So I like kind of like, you know, kind of leaned over, just kind of touched Gene Simmons so I could say, hey, I touched Gene Simmons. So I'm telling you now, I touched Gene Simmons. So anyway, so the, that little group broke up and, and Gene is walking away and, and, and I said, uh, um, I'm 16, uh, Mr. Simmons. And he goes, uh, don't worry, I'll be, right, I'll be right with you. Don't worry, I'll get you what you need, right? And then he walks away. So I'm hanging out backstage some more. And uh, so now, you know, there's a little more buzz going on. And, and then the, the backstage manager, I think they called him Big John or something like that. Um, he comes into me and says, uh, have you seen Gene yet? I said, no. He says, well, come with me. 
So we, he walks me back into the dressing room. It was cool. I saw like the little stations where they all put their makeup on. And sitting at the back of the a dressing room was Gene Simmons, and he was sitting on the couch, and a girl, <laughs> duh. But it didn't really look like a groupie. It kind of looked like, you know, it was, it looked business-like to me, so maybe at 16 I was easily fooled, whatever. But, but Gene had this uh, stack of photos, and, and it looked like he was just, you know, sign a photo, hand it. So just going through this stack of, you know, this autographing these uh, press photos, whatever. So Gene was like, he didn't really want to spend a lot of time with me, so he was like, oh yeah, come here. So he signs Gene Simmons and pretty much like, go away, you know. So that was it. So I go back out, and uh, I go end up going out back outside, uh, and so then my friends show up, Dell and Phil. And I told them what happened, and they were like, oh man, are you kidding me? So, and you know, I was like kind of the celebrity outside. People were looking at me, and there was a buzz, you know, I was telling people what happened, and everybody was like, oh wow. So then a little while goes by and then the, um, the lights, or we hear that they were starting to let people in, the front doors. So I start walking around to go in and I thought, wait a minute, I have a backstage pass. So at this time, now the security guards kind of knew it was okay for me to go in and out. So I walk in backstage and I find my way out to where the stage is and walk around. And you know, back in those days when you went to a concert, there were chairs on the floor level, but the first 20 rows, people stood. I mean, there was a barrier, a rail, and as soon as the show started, everybody ran and stood the entire show. Knowing that, and basically when people got there, they were already starting to stand too. So I went around and I stood front row center on the rail, and that's where I stayed the entire show. I mean, there, boom. Watched the entire show. I had my, you weren't supposed to take pictures, but I had my little Hawkeye, so I, I snuck a few pictures in, and hopefully I can still find them, and I'll show them on this video, but I got some pictures of Gene spitting blood, I think I got him blowing the fire, I got some of Ace, I got, you know, you'll, I'll, I'll post the pictures. So, I knew that, uh, I knew that Kiss always did three encores at every show. So, after the second song, I started making my way out. I mean, this is very crowded, so you're like, you know. And as I'm, because I thought, you know, I'm gonna go backstage after the show and see what happens, right? Um, so I'm going out, and, and out of the corner of my eye, I see this white object, and I look up, and what happened was Paul Stanley threw a towel, like, you know, they wiped their face, threw a towel out in the audience, and, and, and there it was, and it kind of landed near me, and there were already three or four people with their hands, you know, tuggling, tussling over it. I saw a piece of white, so I grabbed on, you know? And like everybody's, I'm just kind of like, you know, whatever, and everybody's just kind of doing their thing, right? And it fell down to me and this other guy and some little kid. And the guy looked at me and said, you better let go. And I'm like, that was like, you know, we were either gonna fight or I was gonna fight for this towel. And I'm like, you know what? I got more important things to do than fight over a towel right now. So I said, whatever. And he gave it to the little kid, so that was cool. So I made my way around to um, the side, and now there weren't a lot of people over there, but it was still loud, I mean, because there's the, the cab, the uh, speakers were right there. And there was a security guard standing there, you know, this guy, you know, standing there like, you know, just he was watching the, uh, the rope between the audience and backstage where there was you know, no one at this point. And so I, you know, you can't hear, I'm like, and he's like, I said, I showed him my backstage pass. And, and, I, and I could see, I couldn't hear him, but I could say, where'd you get this? And I said, Ace, <laughs> which is true, but I'm like, and he goes, he goes, he puts it in his pocket and goes like that. So in other words, you don't have a backstage pass anymore. I'm not gonna fight with a bouncer, all right, a, a security guard. So it's like, man. That guy sucked. And by the way, if you're listening to this right now, you suck, man. That, that could have been a cool night. But, you know, who knows what would have happened, but chances are, you know, God, they're not going to let 16-year-old guys hang out with kids. They were looking for the 16-year-old girls. Anyway, so that was more or less the end of my kiss story. And uh, it, was, it was really a, 
That was one of the most exciting days of my life, really, when it comes to celebrity sightings. So I hope you enjoyed the story. I'll try to post some pictures.